I'm taking a ride up to Lowy Province, which is about a nine hour drive north of Bangkok, up near the Mekong River. It's the least populated province in Thailand. And it is the home of my honey here, or her former home. It's where her family has a bunch of farmland and a great big family. We'll meet some of them as well. And I'm taking my gaggle of cuties who are quietly and patiently sitting in the back, being pretty. Now, Boo Cow tells me that she needs to dress conservatively up here in Bensam High. And I guess this is her idea of conservative. One of the reasons I love the lass. I wonder what she put on if she wanted to look sexy. <laughs> <laughs> so, her first order of business, now that I'm shooting into the sunlight, let's go around on the other side here. A first order of business on arrival here in Bansom High is to go to her property. She bought this property about a year and a half, two years ago. It was before COVID, so I guess about two years ago, with the intention of uh, eventually building a house on it. And this flat part down here is uh, what she had excavated for a future home. Uh, but she owns that property all the way back up on the hill. And as you can see, her older sister immediately planted corn on it. They're an industrious bunch, these Sarusi folks. And now she's just up here uh, taking photographs of it because she wants to leverage this. She's buying a house in Bangkok. She's a bright young girl. This, uh, well, young is relative. She's young to me. And <laughs> she's a bright and uh, an industrious woman. My boa cow. I think she takes after her father. <laughs> As best I can determine from the stories that I'm getting from boa cow and her sisters, their father, Kun Tan, arrived here in Bansam High in the early 60s on a road, something like this. This is the only roads that existed back then. And he trekked up here with his elephant. He had his own damn elephant. That in and of itself makes me like the guy. I want to have an elephant. Of course, there are roads now. Actually, the roads here are pretty nice. But as you can see, it's quiet as all get out here. It's noontime on a Wednesday. And there isn't a soul around. This is not a very populated place in the world. But it is populated with Sour Sea Girls. The legacy of Kun Tan is a guy that I'm going to tell you all about. I'm impressed. I wish I got to meet the guy. He died in 2008. He was 73 years old, just a year older than I am right now. And what a legacy. Here in Bansom High, in this region of the world, he has nine children, all daughters and about 35 grandchildren. Yeah, we're out in the sticks here. This is the weeds for sure, or the corn, to be more precise. Beautiful countryside. One of the reasons that it's not that populated up here is because there's not a lot of uh, farmable land because of the hills. And here in the Bonsam High District, our sea sisters own a lot of the available land. There we got Miss Boa Cow. Yes. Miss <laughs> <Pata. laughs> Baby Winter. Bumming. And Panoi. Yes. Got it right. I always confuse Panoi and Patoy, the boss. And let's not forget Nome Pao. She's certainly a city girl. She even makes this outfit look good. And here's Miss Kelly.
What a difference a season makes. The last time I was here on the Mekong River, you could have walked across it to Laos, or Lao, as the locals call it. And here at the end of the rainy season, there's quite a difference. Mekong River in Laos, it's filled with so much intrigue and mystery, ancient stories. Up that way is Myanmar, or what was once known as Burma, and further north into China in the Golden Triangle. And if you head in this direction, it's toward Cambodia and Vietnam. And what a story the Mekong River in Vietnam had for my generation. But I'm here talking about a guy who was a mere 20 years older than me. And he wound up here in Northern Thailand, in this region of Northern Thailand, in the late 50s, early 60s, leading and riding an elephant, of all things. And in his lifetime, he created a whole lot. Now, what he created was, you know, modest by Western standards, even by most high standards. But he did accumulate you know, about 300 acres of farmland. He had a wife. As a matter of fact, he had several wives and scores of kids. In the family that I know, he had nine children. And he put together, you know, a prosperous lifestyle, prosperous for these regions. And here today in Chang Khan, which is a, a town that's a, a tourist kind of place, popular with locals. I mean, foreigners visit here too, but it's known as a local uh, destination. And I got my crew, the proportion of, of Mr. Tan's family, children, grandchildren, and what would be a great grandchild right there. Hey, so what do you got? And over there in that corner too, let's go get this section of the family. The only way I could get them to take their masks off all at the same time was to bring them to lunch. And that's what we're enjoying here on the Mekong River, basking in the legacy of Kun Tan. I'm impressed. All right, Mike, clap. <laughs> Thank you.